Uh, but the word eternal is being used slightly loosely. Semi-eternal might be more accurate. Uh, it's eternal into the future. Uh, we do not think that it's eternal into the past. Uh, making assumptions that seem reasonable, uh, we've been able to, quote, prove mathematically uh, that it's in fact not possible to extrapolate, not possible to extrapolate, not possible to extrapolate arbitrarily far into the past. I need to dig deeper. So I visit Alan Guth at MIT. It's no exaggeration to say that Alan changed humanity's concept of how the universe began. Alan, one of the great perennial questions of human beings throughout all history, and it applies to us today, is to look around at our universe, see it in a remarkable way that we understand today more than ever before, and ask, did it have a beginning? How do we think about that question? Well, in the first instance, we look at what the universe is doing today and try to extrapolate backwards. Uh, when we do that, we see the universe is expanding today. Uh, when we extrapolate that backwards, it gets smaller and smaller and ultimately, presumably, came from something extremely small and dense. Now, that still leaves the question of whether or not this hot, dense state was really the beginning or whether or not there may have been some prehistory to that. The theory that I've worked on called inflation seems to imply that there almost certainly was a prehistory, but still there would be a beginning someplace. Uh, inflation uh, is basically an attempt to explain the bang of the Big Bang, what set the universe into this period of gigantic expansion. Uh, it turns out the conventional Big Bang theory really said nothing about the Big Bang itself, the propulsion mechanism. Uh, inflation takes advantage of ideas coming out of particle physics uh, which tell us that at very high energy densities, there's a prediction that there should exist forms of matter which literally turn gravity on its head, causing gravity to become repulsive. So this repulsive gravity would be the driving force behind the Big Bang. The assumption would be that the early universe contained at least a small amount of this repulsive gravity material. Uh, it drove then an exponential expansion, which became the Big Bang of our universe, the driving force behind the expansion. What is it about inflation that makes the possibility of prior universes or subsequent universes conceivable? Uh, it has to do with the way inflation ends. Uh, inflation ends, we believe, because this repulsive gravity material is fundamentally unstable. So, like a radioactive material, we believe that this repulsive gravity material had a half-life. Uh, the decay was exponential certain amount of time, half of it decays, wait, same amount of time again, half of what remains decays. But the catch here is that while it is decaying, it is continuing to exponentially expand. Uh, so it works out that if you wait one half-life of the decay, uh, half of it has disappeared, but nonetheless the half that remains is nonetheless larger, and in fact vastly larger, than in the region that you started with. Uh, so even while it's decaying, this repulsive gravity material uh, increases in volume and will then therefore, according to these theories, never disappear. They go on inflating forever with pieces of the material decaying and producing universes, which I usually refer to as pocket universes. But one of these pocket universes would be, in fact, vastly larger than our observed universe. And our observed universe would just be a tiny piece of one pocket. Wow. Right. Uh, this process seems to predict uh, that the universe will go on with pieces of inflating forever, eternally into the future, and we refer to it as eternal inflation. Uh, but the word eternal is being used slightly loosely. Semi-eternal might be more accurate. Uh, it's eternal into the future. Uh, we do not think that it's eternal into the past. Uh, making assumptions that seem reasonable, uh, we've been able to, quote, prove mathematically uh, that it's in fact not possible to extrapolate arbitrarily far into the past.